presentation. Uh, good morning, uh, my extended family is from the South Asia, and I don't know it's by default or by strategic that even Myanmar was included in South Asia conference. So welcome, Myanmar. <coughs> yeah, uh, basically I'll be talking about the media, how the media can actually promote uh, uh, amalgating uh, South Asia at the same time promote happy South Asia society. So let's it's a breather because we have seen what media how media can actually uh, be negative uh, and then actually in a way uh, not contribute to peace and harmony. But uh, I'm talking from a different lens as a as a not as a practicing journalist, but more from a policy making, more as a management view, and also seeing the media, the growth of media in Bhutan as well as in the South Asia. Uh, media is changing very fast uh, everywhere, and the fact is, uh, it's seen all worldwide that uh, it's doing more harm than actually it, it is in reality. Because as some of our friends yesterday pointed out, that the media has a, has a power to poison society, and it's instant. And to undo that, it takes a long, uh, effort, uh, and then I actually talk about the GNH uh, as a uh, breather to what's happening around South Asia. So Bhutan uh, features very seldom in uh, South uh, Asia uh, news streams. At the same time, even the South Asia's news uh, news in Bhutan is very very sporadic. Yeah. Most of uh, us would agree that uh, our news are more local than actually regional. <clears throat> even the uh, news uh, that is featured about Bhutan are even based or based on GNH or something else. And uh, we have uh, discovered from a little research that I've done that uh, most of the time, uh, most of our news that comes about Bhutan are biased or opinionated. So that's the thing that's happening around. And <clears throat> but as far as Bhutan is concerned uh, and the Bhutanese media is concerned. Uh, the s whenever we make reports or stories about the South Asia friends, we are very sensitive. And as uh, as th my friend Lamzang pointed out yesterday, we are as cordial as possible, and then we try to build peace and harmony. And that's the reason why whenever a lot of my friends from South Asia visit Bhutan, you are more than welcomed. You would always feel welcomed. That's the whole reason because we have already developed the perception of our South Asian friends in in better light. And that is the whole reason. However, uh, yeah, as we all know that uh, the media's influence on foreign policy, both as well as domestic policy, is more indirect than direct. But no matter what, uh, it uh, helps uh, public opinion. And then at the same time, then we actually look at things from a different angle. So with that, I would like to bring out a few examples of uh, what has happened in the past and what's uh, will keep on happening and how actually there are remedies for it. Uh, so, for instance, uh, Bhutan in the Nepalese media is mostly we have stories about the people in the camps. And because of that, uh, when I visit Bhutan, a lot of my Nepalese friends look at me or my, country, um, my countrymen from an angle that we have actually, you know, driven out the people from the south. That is the view that they have. And we don't blame them that uh, it has happened in the past. It's, uh, the fact was it was media because irresponsible because it had uh, sowed a seed of discontent, discord, sorry, and uh, reinforced prejudice uh, and it muddled facts and, you know, peddled half-truths. And uh, that is because we didn't have balanced report both from the Nepalese media as well as on certain part from the Bhutanese media also. We haven't actually informed much to the international media so that is but the thing is we have to look beyond that we have so much uh, historical relations with nepal we have culturally very some similarities we have tourism a pilgrimage site uh, nepal is a big pilgrimage for uh, the uh, the bhutanese who are buddhist or even hindus so that's why i think those are the things that we have to build on let's not make uh, uh, the uh, people in the camp, the Kargil for Bhutan and Nepal. Uh, and the fact is illegal immigration is an issue all over South Asia. It's not just confined to Bhutan. So there are a lot of things that the media can do actually to uh, take the discourse further and actually see uh, solutions to it rather than 
peddling half truths and build on the negativities. The other thing I would like to talk about is the uh, recent uh, uh, in 2013, during the general election, we had an influx of, I don't know, all of a sudden our Indian media friends were really uh, uh, gango on Bhutan's uh, stories. We had uh, stories from the Chinese incursion into the Bhutanese border and then removal of uh, kerosene and LPG subsidy, which, is a huge, which made a huge cry, who and cry in Bhutan especially for p the common people, which are going to be directly affected a lot. And at the same time, then we had th the whole uh, issue about our ex-Prime Minister having a sideline talk with the Chinese uh, Premier, and then actually, uh, which was not well taken by Delhi, it suppose. So those were the things, but we do not know whether it was uh, ill-timed or whether it was intentional. But at the same time, this gave a lot of the Putin, especially the intelligentsia diaspora to look at foreign relations from a very different perspective. A lot of people were on blogging, a lot of uh, reports were on the media talking about how, you know, Bhutan needs to rethink its uh, uh, Indo-Bhutan dependency relation and in the geopolitical context of India, Bhutan and China and then the need to balance the nature of Bhutan's relation with Indi India vis-a-vis -vis China. And at the same time, because Bhutan is very much interested to resolve the boundary issues, Bhutan is the only country besides India which has not resolved boundaries with China. So we would like to do that very urgently. It's in our better interest that we do that. <clears throat> so at the same time, a lot of uh, people in Thimpu and elsewhere in Bhutan at the thought that India media as well as the politician shouldn't interfere in the Bhutanese uh, uh, conduct of its foreign policy and its relation and its internal affairs. So as far as possible, or for the matter, uh, India and our uh, Indian media should refrain from, especially when it's sensitive issues like the elections and where it makes a huge difference to add, at least refrain from uh, doing damage. And at the same time, uh, a lot of Bhutanese felt that it was not uh, keeping up to what, uh, uh, with the Treaty of 1949, which was revised in 2007, where actually you guarantee, uh, we have revised saying that henceforth India won't be advising Bhutan on the foreign policy relations or one medal in it. And uh, even uh, uh, the new prime minister has pointed out clearly that good relations with India are the cornerstone of our foreign policy. So that's the fact, and it will remain forever. <coughs> and uh, also the other uh, uh, reports is on the security threats that we have in the south with the infiltrations of uh, separatists uh, from the northeast uh, groups. So. Th those have issues and were highlighted, which actually worries Bhutan at the same time India. So on this uh, front, I think uh, India and the India and Bhutan media has to do a lot more and develop a win-win framework and actually see mutually beneficial schemes in order to undo such uh, ill reportings. And uh, one of the other thing that affects life. Uh, in the plains, Assam and West Bengal and uh, Bangladesh is the uh, floods. And numerous times Bhutan has been made responsible for releasing our waters from the dam without informing, which is very untrue. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I think those kind of things uh, develops enormousity towards people. And when you start developing enormousity over around the borders, that's where things bungle up. We have problems one after another. So it is very important that we have, we give the truth. The media come out there and do proper research and present the truth and balance reporting. <clears throat> uh, with this fact, uh, we have already seen a lot of uh, problems the media can uh, get into uh, a lot of uh, the challenges and issues with the media right now presently. So with this, I offer uh, the concept of gross national happiness as a discussion, as a theory that all of us can work on to. Bhutan, uh, the GNH, as explained by Lamzang, 
during the question answer session as well is a philosophy a concept that drives the development of Bhutan it was pr uh, propounded or the brainchild of the fourth king of Bhutan his majesty Jigme Singhi Wongchuk basically it was a pun on GD GNP he basically said when he was asked a question by an Indian journalist when he was returning from the non-aligned movement meeting in Mumbai in 79 he was asked uh, what we but we know very little about Bhutan so what is your GNP so his majesty said uh, for me GNP is not important it's G GNH the gross national happiness concept important so that's where things so I put this uh, forward to the people uh, to our friends here to look at it from your perspective because at the end of the day it would be a lie that every one of every individual of us is not trying to achieve happiness if that is untrue then you can leave this theory behind or even the concept behind but the fact is this is where we can look basically we are not talking about uh, you know presenting happy story or pleasant stories in the media all the time but we are saying that uh, this is offered to the media and the journalists as a higher goal that makes them achieve their true purpose of existence. It is not a proposal for the media, as I said, to carry happy stories all the time, but rather the necessity of making the media more conscious and reflective of the principles and values in their everyday work. I think that's where we are missing. A lot of us are missing and then we are going after profit. For instance, today we look at South Asia. A lot of our media is only profit driven. It's at the end of the day how much revenue you can generate so that you can pay your staff, things like that. But we are not talking about extreme. We are talking about balance here. GNH, we are not talking about a demeaning material pursuit. We are saying let's make a balance here. Let's look at things from a balanced point of view. Let's tread the middle path. So... Uh, the questions I'm going to leave you it is, can we develop a media model embedded in the GNH values and principles? Can the South Asia media be a new breath of fresh air at a time when the global media is contributing to unhappiness characterized by consumerism, commercialism, sensationalism, corruption, and lack of professionalism? And uh, can South Asia media learn to treat the audiences as people and not consumers? So, how do we go about building a South Asia where our people and state can pursue GNH? Thank you.